Ah, the DeLorean, the car that made me love cars. From its stainless steel construction, Guagaro styling, and role in one of my favorite movie franchises of all time, what's not to love? Well, there is something not to love, actually, and that's the engine. Because although it does work, it is boring, and I have been on a quest to find a better, faster, cool DeLorean. So far, it's been my unicorn. If you remember, last season on Tuned, we tried to drive an engine swap DeLorean, and it didn't go well. That's when I got a call from Stephen Wynn, who is the CEO of the DeLorean Motor Company right here in Houston, Texas. He says, Matt, come drive my DeLorean. It only has one moving part. And that's what we're here to do, because this is the electric DeLorean. With a 35 kilowatt hour electric motor, it makes 250 horsepower and runs on zero gas. So today, I'm gonna take it for a ride and see if I can finally have my cool DeLorean. I'm Matt Farah, and welcome to Tuned. 200 feet in each direction. It's a, <laughs> a 40,000 square foot warehouse. Oh my God, show me so, the rest. So, so there are 2,850 parts that go to a DeLorean. Okay. And you know, you, you will see literally thousands of each piece in here, depending on what it goes to. You see the engines here to the right. Um, these are NOS crate engines. There's probably about 75, 80 engines here, which is what we have left from the original inventory. So you literally purchased the entire factory's worth of inventory, right? Yeah, yeah. Water panels, then we've got glass and hoods and fenders here to, to the right. At the end of it, you know, they just had this freaky condition where they had masses of inventory that they normally wouldn't have had, and then they went into receivership. So, you know, we've been able to, to you know, to work with this inventory for the past 15 years since we acquired it. There's got to be a thousand doors here. There is, actually, yeah. Are there yeah, a thousand yeah. doors here? There's eight pieces of stainless on the exterior of the car, and pretty well all of it we've got other than the left fender. And the left fender, you know, we're down to a handful. So going forward, that is something that we will eventually have to reproduce. There's two stories going on. One is that they were always stamped in batches, and the, the next batch to stamp was the left fender, and then they went into receivership, and they, and they just never got, they, they never got stamped. So if I wanted a left front fender, how much more would it cost than a right front fender? Well, a, a, a right fender uh, retails for about eight or nine hundred dollars, uh -huh. and a left fender, because of the supply and demand, it, you know, twenty five hundred, thirty five hundred. Oh, really? 30, oh, so it's like hundred. four times the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. I came here to drive your new electric DeLorean, so why don't you show me that? Sure. Yeah. Let's go check check it out. So what we have here is the electric DeLorean, which we unveiled to the market last October. The car has 35 kilowatts of power on board. It has a zero to 60 in sub five seconds, um, top speed of over 100 miles an hour. It has a lithium ion phosphate battery pack. Um, this one here is a DC motor, um, which has the equivalent of about 250 horsepower. Um, we will be changing it when we go to production and it will be an AC motor. The DC motor does not have any regen, so obviously we, we want to have regen, which will happen when we go into production. Sit in here, it's mostly similar, so let's start it. It's now on, okay. And I got a simple knob here, just reverse neutral drive like a golf cart. Switch it over to drive, and we're off. Well, this is certainly strange. It's pretty quiet in here. It takes a while. The DeLorean has a very firm accelerator pedal, so I don't really know how much to use, but it's all sort of familiar territory in here. The gauges are exactly what you'd expect in a normal DeLorean. There's a mock range gauge on the right because this is a prototype car. It's not fully done. There's a battery gauge up here, which is just a mock-up right now. There's an actual auxiliary battery gauge down there, which is functional, but I have a full charge, so I don't imagine I'll be running out anytime soon. Torque my way out of corners very nicely. The electric motor in this car makes 230 horsepower and 240 pounds of torque, which is actually not bad. It's almost twice the torque the original car made and about 100 horsepower more than the original, but it does carry around about 300 pounds of extra weight. And you feel it through the steering, if not through the engine. 
And if you thought the Camaro required a gangster lean position, you've never been in a DeLorean because I feel like I'm in a Formula One seat right now with how far I'm laying down. It's also a prototype and therefore does not have air conditioning. So this tiny little window here, that's all you get. The good news is I can still drive with the doors open if I ever want a freshy fresh breeze. And actually, <laughs> quite prefer that. <laughs> this is better. All right, there's traffic coming. I'm gonna pull out in front of traffic quickly. Let's see, that's, that's floored. Here we go. There's 15, 20 mile an hour, 50. There's 70. Oh, so it goes, it, it does get up and go a little bit. In a Tesla, you get that really loud, pronounced whoosh, the Jetsons noise. In this, is really nothing. You don't hear a whole lot of electric motor. And, and we have a microphone back there in the, uh, well, motor compartment. And I'm not really sure if it's picking it up. Tom, is it picking it up? We're not getting any real sound back there either. Now, in this particular prototype car, there are 13 battery packs. There's some in the back where the motor is, and there's some up front where the gas tank used to be. Now, the good thing about that is because this car was originally a transaxle setup, this tunnel here is completely hollow and empty. So in the production version, they plan on filling this area with batteries to give you a potential 200 mile range versus about 100, which is what you get with this car as it sits. Now something else Steven told me that when they come out with the production of this car, they're gonna have a system in it called reverse to grid. So basically, let's say you're charging the car at your house, right? Well, now there's a power outage in your house. Power goes out, thunderstorm, whatever. You can reverse the flow and power an average size home for three days using the car. How cool is that? When this car goes on sale, hopefully in the middle of next year, they're trying to hit a target price of about $95,000, including the car. So given the fact that a really, really nice DeLorean with all new stuff in it is about 50 grand, it's an extra 40 for the electric inversion. It's nice to drive. Hopefully they work out everything they need to work out in order to certify it for road use because I'd like to see these driving around. I think it's neat. For LA traffic, it's a great cruiser car. You get more power than stock. You don't use gas. You spend a little more money up front, but you still have a cool classic car with an electric conversion that just fits the car well. Well, I think we found it. A working, functional, modified DeLorean. And it's awesome. I have had a great time today. But there is one problem. I like to drive, and 100 miles isn't enough for me. Fortunately, they have another option, and it's right here. This flat black Jalopnik-themed livery DeLorean is a stage three package. And what you get for that is heads, cams, headers, exhaust, and a supercharger, which feeds the stock PRV engine five pounds of boost, giving you 230 horsepower. Although we didn't have time to film it, I drove this car earlier today and it is absolutely fantastic. If you're a DeLorean owner or a prospective owner, I highly recommend spending the 13 grand to get one. I'd like to thank Steven and the guys for having me down here at DMC Houston. It's been a great day and we found a functional Tune DeLorean. I'm Matt Farah and thanks for watching us on Tune right here on the Drive Network. And we just use an, an abrasive pad and, and just basically all you do is go with the grain I like that have That's a try it. have a try see just go with the grain see? i can do that I, I even an idiot like me can see? do that and, and most people are so frightened of the stainless yeah. thinking what do i do if i scratch you and, and that's so no wet sanding or anything like no, that just no, just dry. this is a standard like almost a kitchen well, it's, it's, you know, it's a, the gray designates the coarseness of okay. it. You know, because most common you'll see a green or the red, and uh -huh. they're, they're too soft.